Tigers. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here, host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, and author of the Opening Call Daily Newsletter. Um, we we had been trading the uh, just on the short term trading side. We've been trading the Dow via the SDOW for the short side, three times short, and the UDOW three times long, really well. Uh, even though we've just got the core position from the August 1st high in the Dow and and keeping that because we think that we've got to do a lot of testing of support before we get a really good buy signal. As a trade, it looked to me like uh, we just got stopped out of a short position yesterday, it's still with a profit, but we got stopped out. And if it hadn't been, if I had loaded just a tad that stop, I might have just said hold it because that H pattern, it usually, if it's going to bounce, it's going to bounce and make a small second arch. Remember the dreaded H pattern? Let me just show you this in Chapman methodology if I can find it right here. There it is. Let me get to it right now. Climb higher. So I'm always looking at these three core patterns straight line up, straight line down. That's one. Two is a cup formation. Three is an arch formation and a mix of one and two or one and three. Very simple. The three, when it's red, uh, so th this particular one where it's one and three, is a straight line down and then at a peak A or a B, it fails and arches over. And then how it takes out, if it does take out the left side load is really important. On this side, you've got your green Y, reverse Y pattern, because if it takes out that left side high, you're going to continue up, and here it is. Look, there's a move up, and then it makes a Y, another Y, and then pulls down, and now it makes the arch. So that's the weekly chart of the Dow. So my thinking was, just as a trade, there was a chance that we could have uh, get an entry here, have a bounce towards the pink or even the 14-period moving averages, get ready for the second arch. But when you micromanage like that, that's really tough to do, especially since I, I try my best to make it just a once a day newsletter early in the morning between 8 and 8.30 it comes out. I don't really like to update during the day. I found over the decades that updating in very, the very next day, you can get the same result, an even better one. So I try to avoid it. However, um, this looked quite good. And I wanted the uh, sh uh, the long position just for this is small position on the long side, just as a trade, and it it worked just for a moment, and then it started to come down. And one of the reasons I, I felt so stupid is that the tide. I always talk about the tide. Trade the tide because if you're trading, for instance, if you're throwing a um, say you you've got a little a branch of a tree, a little kind of a, a small branch. And you throw it into the water. If the tide is going out, that branch will not come to shore. It will just keep being pushed away, pushed away. If the tide is coming in and you want to throw the branch and have it go, if you have the branch and the tide is going down, no matter how much you, you, you throw it, it's going to keep going down. If you want it, if the tide is coming in and you throw the branch, it's going to keep coming in no matter what happens. So in this particular instance, the tide here, this is the tide. This is the pattern that I always look at. So I feel kind of stupid for doing that. Um, yeah, it was a 1% loss on a three times long. I mean, that is really, uh, it's, very, it's very difficult to make it less than that for it. But it, what's a pity? Because it was a waste. It was just a waste of energy. Now, there is a chance that the day is young and that we will find some kind of support because let me explain what I'm looking at here. Look. Dow's down 112. The S&P, here it comes the s and if I can type it in the right place. Here it comes the S&P, S&P, um, down quite sharply. It took out the 42.16.45 low of or around about August the 1st, uh, October the 1st. And it bounced and went to peak ABC. 
And that invariably says if you go to a C or a D on the upside, you've actually used up a lot of both upside energy and downside. So you might stall once you get to a little bit lower than the left side low. And that's exactly what we did. But now the tide, look, the nine period moving average is way under the 14. The price is way under the 200 period moving average. The MACD is negative. Stochastic's down at 16%, very negative. So anything that happens here says you haven't yet made any decent low. And look at the weekly chart. Legs C to the downside, 9 under the 14. MACD weeks, stochastic at 17%. Could still go to the single digits just like the, da the daily could. So this is the in the very short term. That, that was really silly, I must say. Thank goodness we've kept our core position short. Now look at the QQQ. Here's the same thing. The QQQ barely, 351.36 was the low. I think it was September the 29th. Let me just check that date. Yeah, 27th. September the 27th. And ran up to the chat wave inside track repellent zone. Gets pulled back. Uh, actually gets repelled very sharply. Comes out and takes out the left side low three days ago by... Uh, 14 cents, uh, 24 cents, 351.12. And now you've had this peak A, a gray A, and it's coming back sharply. And look, here's the weekly. And the weekly for the first time, you remember I said that last week at, on Friday, I got NQ at NQ. That's the E-mini NASDAQ 100 continuous contract. Went S, went to the sell signal, on the weekly chart, therefore, I had to put a down arrow. The QQQ had all the ingredients of time and enough closes below the 14-period moving average, but it never went pink. And as I say, this has got a whole two and a half days to go now. Let's see what happens over the two and a half days. I don't like the fact that it's joined all of the others. Look, IWM went pink a long time ago in the weekly chart. And look how poorly it's behaving. Um, it's at 163. But look at this. You've got your left side low of importance. That goes all the way back to uh, in 2022. That was October. The low was 162.50. And we're trading right now at 163.83. We're almost there. And if we take that out, that is really not a good sign. That, that, that makes me a little nervous, I must say. All right, let's go. Now I want to go to the gold. I, I just want to show you the semiconductors. Down uh, two and a half, well, two, 2.63 at 141.62. It held the left side low of 27th of uh, September, 139.76. Ran all the way to the 154 area, got trapped in that inside track repellent zone. Oh, we, I should mention we are still short. We're short from just over 159, which is uh, two points from the all-time high that was made on the 31st of July. Um, yeah, so you see this move. I don't know. I'm going to put it in here just kind of. I'm not going to say for fun. You don't want to have for fun in the market uh, when you... But I'll put it in here and say there is a chance... That the oh, I don't even want to talk about it. it. Has to go to the 137, 136 area. It's at 141, right now. But look at this weekly chart. It's now started leg C to the downside. This is a very I like to think of uh, the semis as in in everything, and they are really the market leaders up and down. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 118. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So a question has come in about FCG, First Trust Natural Gas ETF. So if you're looking at natural gas, the question is, should I add to it right here? A good place to add to existing position. And I'd say... Um, let me just go through this. Natural gas trading at 0 0.05 at 3.378. This is a nice two-day bounce, a green candle three days ago with a new low, and then a green candle yesterday, good move up, and a green candle today. I, I was going to say I would wait just a little bit, uh, and the reason is we're in this – climate for, I don't mean climate, climate, uh, I mean this uh, aura right now of where what's, what should be working isn't necessarily working. For instance, we're starting to get into the winter months. Uh, it's getting cold. Uh, not everywhere, but in a lot of places in the country. And you had that spike in natural gas. And I've been talking about natural gas for a while. All the letters have moved because this is a continuous contract. It goes A, B. And that's a C right there. And the question for me was, is it possible for natural gas to close above the high of the, the week of the 11th of August, where it was 3.69 of the continuous contract? If you go to the UNG, I think the UNG is a little bit, for me, a little bit more accurate because um, I'm dealing with a price that doesn't change. I mean, every day the price changes, but it doesn't get smoothed out like the continuous contract, all the notations are exactly right, everything, the trend lines, everything, except then the price gets adjusted. And because of that, you've got a completely different price. So in this case, the price is the same. So the price right now is up 0.07 to 7.03. And what I had said way back here, somewhere like I think it was July, um, probably even earlier than that, is that if you're looking out over the months going into October, maybe it's late September, maybe early October, it could even be a little later in October. That's when normally I would expect natural gas prices to move up. I'm anticipating that prices will move up, but until you break decisively out of this rectangle for long, narrow rectangle formation and close above the high, I think I chose the high of June, the week of June the 30th, which was 7.83. 
two out of three consecutive weeks above that, we've gone once above it um, on the week of the 11th of August to 808. And then the most recent one was a rally to 798. So 798 is still above that, but we, st we not yet. Well, what was the close right there? Yes, we did. The close on 774, the closed week of the 6th of August or 6th of October was 774. And the high I'm talking about is 783. <laughs> no, we haven't. Um, so I'd like to see that because my the way I'm looking at this, I don't believe that this is one of those patterns where the duration can alter the expectation. In other words, this whole series of trades in this long rectangle formation, if I was able to make this the fulcrum right here and move it to the upside, let me just put this in here as if it was, because I don't think it is. So it'll be from this low right here at 587. Just for the moment, I'm, I'm using this as, as a tool. Let's see if I can represent it, represent it visually. Now, let me get something, a pencil or a pen or something. And let me just do this. Okay, once. I've got it that way. There. And now I'm going sideways. Oh, that's actually quite good. So that takes you all the way to the 20 area. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying, here's your fulcrum. Uh, the big breakout should, it, it'll have to be this low right here. Over there. Uh, now I have to use it at, at the breakout point. So if it breaks out, I have to use it there. So that means that would be, but I don't like to do that because that's, I mean, what does that mean? We're trading at 7.05, and I have a projection of 20. I mean, give me a break. Natural gas doesn't know that I have a projection of 20. It doesn't matter what technique I use. So the technique I use here is that when this finally breaks, this it's almost like a, a bowl formation. It's more, actually more like a rectangle. When it breaks, it starts to hold. If at any point going into the last week of December, the first week of January, if it takes out and closes above this candle of the third, the week of the third of March, which is 9.99, now I can start to say to you, whoa, ho, now it's on fire. Oh, I shouldn't say natural gas is on fire. Now, now it's rocketing to the moon. And the moon says that the, the gap of the sixth of the week of the sixth of January of this year at 1341, that's the only way I can do it. And we haven't yet even crossed for two out of three weeks and closed above that high. So let me just do this to say, it's a work in progress, but there's going to have to be a trigger in natural gas that says whatever has been going on right now, and obviously the way it looks, it looks like the demand um, is being met. That's all. The demand has not pushed the price up of natural gas. At some point, demand will shrink. Uh, sorry, the, um, the, the product Availability will shrink, and you will see natural gas start to move. It hasn't done it since the whole of the whole of this year. In, in fact, it did it a beautiful move up going into uh, uh, September, I think it was. No, August of last year, August the 26th, 2022, it was up in the 30s. <laughs> and nothing has spurred it to move, the, it had this one big spike, we were looking at that, that was a successful spike, then it made that peak D in the time, left side, right side, price, time match, and all that, it did it to the week, but failed to get to the high that we were looking at in UNG, which is at $8, and what did I say, eight cents, and that was back in uh, August, I think. So all I can say is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rush to add, other than to say, you're already in the position, if, you're asking me the question, it means that you are ready, then why not do this? You can split the new ad and go right in now at 7.05. I'd have a tough time giving you the stop on this, and I don't even know what the, the, the price would be in the futures. If you're, if you're in the futures, obviously you're in uh, stocks, ETFs. So I'm just saying to you, 
Yeah, split the position, and I would, I'm not going to say I'd prefer to wait, but I'd prefer to divide it so that you get something here. And if there's any pullback, and that pullback in UNG doesn't take out 680 by Friday, and in fact, it does make a higher height, can even touch 712, that's exactly what you want to see. Then I might say at the second position. I did that at a time because I've had a lot of people that have asked me about um, the natural gas. In terms of the FCG, I'm going to say the same thing. FCG uh, doesn't have the same pattern. Or I'm not sure. Just Am I talking about the right thing? First Trust Natural Gas ETF. But all I can say is this one's pulling back and the UNG is going higher. I, I'd base it on the UNG. If you're in the FCG, I'd base it on UNG. So everything that I, I said applies to this as I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Dow is now accelerating low. It's down 145. SMB is down 45. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So the Dow's down 100. Something we can offer. I was just showing you the UNG uh, chart. Let me just get back there. Um, UNG, there it is. And I was showing you the weekly chart. You see this narrow, narrow, but you are making slightly higher lows and higher highs. That's different to the long, narrow, and I've had webinars on this. If you're interested, uh, you sign up for my um, 
opening call newsletter. Uh, you'll be able to check out these uh, patterns that I talk about and give we given webinars on. So in this particular instance, this is slightly different because this is making lower lows and lower highs all within this narrow rectangle. It's really narrow when you think about what the S&P has done since uh, early this morning. And the rally that it, well, it got, went to the 42.30 area, and then the, the support is at 42.24. Now, what normally happens in a pattern like this is that from this, the low, you can actually count a peak A and a B and a C without taking out this initial low. Let me just double check if that's the case. 24.25, 24.25, 25. Okay, so this is what I would look at. I'd look at this, and I'd put a plus sign here. And this is the lowest low from that peak B failure. So this becomes an A. This becomes an A because it's still the low is, is sacrosanct. It hasn't been taken out. A. That becomes a B. That A is a double bottom. And that becomes a C. So now what we're looking at is, is there a chance that it goes to a D above the trend line, horizontal trend line in the, rec, in the, in the long rectangle? And then if it comes back and takes out halfway of the midpoint of the rectangle, there's a real good chance not only is it going to test the low, it's going to take out the low. That's the one, the one pattern. The other is if it starts to close above the left side high, the ugly bar that started the move that's, that before the rectangle, this one here, you want to see it not just touch it, it has to break out above that high. In other words, it needs to close and I'd say decisively, not just a little two twenty-five cents above uh, forty-two thirty-six. It has to go to like forty-two thirty-seven seventy-five. That'd be different. This one still makes the horizontal. And you remember, I like to put these in every once in a while. Uh, if I can find my horizontal line. Hello, anybody? There it is. Uh, there it is. So I'm going to say, click. Right there. Yeah, I'd say that's a good, that's horizontal. And that horizontal line says, if we come back down and we close on any bar underneath 42.28, there's a good chance we're going to not only test the low right here, but we're going to take it out. In this potential for a cup formation, this is more like a bowl, like a little a pizza, deep dish pizza, which I don't particularly like. Too dry. This is the pattern that we're looking at on the upside. So in the UNG chart, this is really what you want to be seeing. You want to see a couple of closes, consecutive closes within a couple of bars above the left side high. That's the left side high right here. This is the high that we're talking about right here. This high of 40, 42.31.50. And then instead of coming down to the halfway market, it breaks to the upside because if it broke down, you could get yourself a one. This is a call, a, a long propeller shaft to the downside. So this whole move down here, if we were to start closing underneath, I could anticipate the same kind of point move to the downside. I usually take it from the upper line, and then I take it from the midpoint, and then I take it from the bottom. So I'm just watching this, and U and G is we want to see this whole thing taken out, and then tackle the left side highs on the left. And that would be very positive. Ah, oh, funny. Almost the same kind of pattern. So now, next thing I want to look at is, within the context of uh, the questions I had. Oh, uh, sorry, folks. I have to apologize. Um, I thought there was something wrong with one of my emails. I have one email that is, I don't, I don't usually get anything from anybody other than the people who know that particular email address. But on the TFNN, Basil Chapman at TFNN, I noticed the, the I, while I was away uh, in Brooklyn, I just I noticed that I couldn't, um, I just couldn't seem to get uh, emails from the TFNN uh, site. I got emails, but they at a, a different uh, email address, and that just said to me there must be something wrong. And now I see that there is something wrong. I hope to get it fixed the next day. I've tried. I don't want to mess with it. I'll get it. I'll get it. My my, my Dan, my uh, 
my computer guy, fabulous computer guy, what, 20 something years. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully he can, he, in fact, he probably knows the password that I don't. So I'll, I'll call him and I'll try to get it organized. So I'm not getting, I don't believe I'm getting, and it turns out I think I'm not getting on the other one either. Or maybe I am. Let me just check this one. I'm going to click on it. I want to see where it was sent. And it was sent to. Um, yeah, I can't see where it was. In other words, I'm looking for the address. Yeah, I don't know which address it's going to. So uh, the index averages are very lacking in volume, something you don't consider without volume, this market going nowhere. Yeah, so within that context, thank you for that comment. I do use volume, but I use it as on-balance volume, and we've used it pretty darn successfully. On-balance volume was a key tool in getting the exact high of the Dow, both the lows and the highs for the last couple many years, and it got the exact, let me just go through here to show you, on-balance volume, look at this, the exact tick, right there, you see that high right there? Just follow that vertical line. That is the high of August the 1st. So I use on-balance volume, use it in a different way, but I'm still using volume. But I don't use, I, it's not that I don't use pure volume. Remember, I'm the guy that came up with that technique. Let's go to Schwab. Uh, there are some others as well, but Schwab, I use that technique to, to say that round number 45 on the 13th of March had the Chapman Wave price volume climax reversal. I mean, how about that? And I said, if it holds for uh, 28 days, with bars in this case, it happens to be days, um, and doesn't take out the low, it can go for 56. And it did that. It actually went all the way to the 67 area from 45. So it had almost a 46% gain. Now it's back down in an, in an arch formation. Oh, my, look at this. This is what I mentioned. It. I should talk. Okay, let me just do this right now as we're talking, because this is going to be a really big clue um, as to when the brokers, and Schwab being a broker, of course, right there. Now let's do the left side, right side, price time match. So that is, so today's technical Friday, it looks like, huh? Usually I do all this stuff on a Friday. Okay, now we're going to go to the right. And we're going to say, have I got enough bars? Oh, this goes way, way, way longer. Whew. All right, just for, just for. Yeah, this takes me. I, I, I'll do this during the break. I don't usually like this. Uh, space to the right. I need to do some crazy to up with. Four. Okay, let's see where this goes. I'll be back, and it takes us to Schwab. Is 21st of November. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So let, let me just finish this thought here. So um, Schwab, let me just do this. Schwab, if I do a perfect left side, I, I haven't, I, this is a work in progress right now because I ha do other things, but on a purely, um, this is mathematical basis, using the plumb line of this high right here, the high that was made in July, uh, 67 was it, what was it? On July the 19th, it went to 68. Point eighty. I'm going to put that in here. 68.80, 68.80 on July. I can't even remember what I said. 20. Let's just make it 21 for now. I'll change it when I need to. Okay. So that says, just on a statistical basis, on my left side, right side, price time match, that's bar symmetry, it would take you to the 21st of November to get down to the 45 level. But this is a chat wave inside wedge target support line. It could bounce as it has previously at any point. So the next level for a bounce would be right here. It depends when, around about 48. And it's trading right now at 49.03. So I, I like to do this just as an exercise but I need to take time because very often there's another point that I take as the as the fulcrum, the midpoint, the plumb line. So in the meantime, this is what I've got. And now I want to go back to format, uh, space to the right. I usually just take seven bars. Let's go seven right there. And we're back to normal. Okay. Now the question is something just spiked the market. And this is the reason why I, I've had – for all the positions that I've had over the, uh, the last uh, few weeks, really tight stops. And one of the one of the things that I'm looking at here is within a – let me make that. That's a peak D. We're always looking for D, the fourth highest peak in the Chapway methodology where a buy signal has gone to a buy mode, and that's where other things can happen. Magni's good. Stochastic's good. One-minute chart. This is only a leg A right there. Oops, A right there in the, I was going to say weekly, it's not, this is the five-minute chart, A, and that's a B. So these sudden pops you've got to expect, and that's the reason why within the context of any position, I'm sure some of you have found it, if you've got a long-term position that you want, you, you've got to give it a wide, a wide berth because it gets stopped out and you get in, get stopped out. But if you want something, and you want it as a, particularly thinking of it as a trade, really a tight stop is the way to go because otherwise um, you're vulnerable to to the whip, whippiness and we've seen that. And actually whippiness in a fairly re, uh, tight range. And that's the whole thing that's been somewhat uh, frustrating. 
um, for positions. So the question came in now. Um, let me see what I wrote down for today. Yeah, so I want you to do that. A question came in about, um, yeah, again, CCJ. So CCJ, look at this nice cup formation. This is the daily. This is, let me just move it away like that. But it's already gotten to a D. And this is Cameco Corporation Uranium Fuel. Monthly chart looks fabulous. It's at a G slash C. It looks to me like it does want to go to a higher high. The weekly chart also has a G slash C. I didn't put it in. I put a G. But it should actually be G slash C. Why is there? Today's Wednesday. I don't want to do too much more in terms of uh, techniques. I'll do that on, on Saturday. Let me, uh, Friday. Friday, let me put down. Alternate count G slash C, and I'll give a good example is CCJ. All right, there it is. Um, and all the technicals here are good. Look, the nines over the 14 in the weekly chart. This the MACD is just about to turn negative, but it's still positive. It looks like a dolphin, right? I love those dolphins. Um, 63.72 in the stochastic, it's starting to weaken, and on balance volume is weakening. But the price is the arbiter of the trend, the price is good. And that's the reason, the only reason why I, I thought to myself, if we've got Dow stocks, finally, the Dow thing, now the generals can't lead without the troops, but if we've got the Dow, so I'm just moving away from this, I'm talking about how to think this market through as clearly as you can. <clears throat> My thinking was that if the S&P pulled back a little bit and the QQQs pull back, the Dow leadership should see some kind of flurry of buying activity coming to the other sectors, and then maybe the Dow stalls and the other sectors come on strong, unless they are so weak that they drag the Dow lower. And this is my thinking right now. And the reason is, you see that what I said is, this is an alternate count that went to a peak D in September at 42. And then it pulled back, and it had this big rally. The dreaded H pattern was successful. That's the reason why I'm saying I'm not ignoring that uh, charts that have successful H patterns can really have a very nice bounce, right? This did, and it broke a couple many times over the arch high, but it only went to a D. And D underneath the previous D says if you if you can't manage to get to a C or a B in this time frame. But you get to D, you run out of energy. So it just says on the shorter term, CCJ is stalling somewhat. But when you're looking at um, it, when you're looking at the patterns, this H pattern that became successful, I was looking at the chance that INDU right here. Okay, the dreaded H pattern, look, it pulled back from the 200 period moving average, and yet with all the selling pressure, it couldn't break 32,846. The YM, the futures, did break it by a fraction. The um, QQQ, look, yes, the N NQ, the daily chart, took out, went right to the 200 period moving average. But the QQQ, Weekly chart held, and that's what I'm saying. There's some kind of resiliency to this market. We've we've seen just a, a, a series of lower highs and lower lows. Basically, that's what the trend has been down, but it's not been a crash trend at all. In fact, even today with um, Google, I'm going to Google not a G, not the trading uh, Google. This is G O O G Alphabet Inc. C stock. Um, the, the one that people trade is Google L, G-O-O-G-L. Anyway, so look at this, makes a peak C1, C2, doing fabulous, as I said the other day. Even if it pulled back, it's still making new highs in uh, on a yearly basis. Not the all-time high was back in February of 2022, uh, over over um, a, a year and a half ago, at 152.10. And it slumps down to the 80s, and now it's rallying. And even today, with a 12-point slide, an 8%, one of the only times I've seen an 8% slide like this, there was a big gap there. And then it filled the gap. This was back in September, and it filled the gap very quickly. So the reason why I'm saying that there's a chance that they're buying, the way I'm looking at it right now, there are buyers on the dips. There are sellers on the rally. But as long as you've got this equilibrium, 
I don't see this as crash material. I just see this as low lows and low highs and low lows and just persistent. And the songs that have held best now have a little bit of room to digest the recent gains like a Google and we'll see what happens. It's a bit, oh, the Dow's now only down 33, S&P's down 30. A little bit of a comeback. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Trap and Tiger from Mr. Zell, last segment coming up. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So I just wanted to show you how important the 200 period moving average can be. Here's the 10 minute chart of the uh, E-mini. December e mini it went to a peak D. Remember, we were always looking for peak Ds. Did a nice one to one earlier on. That was at one o'clock, uh, was it uh, yesterday? All right, it went to a peak D. If you look at the vertical line, you'll see that this was a little bit weaker than the left side high, and then it came down and it hugged that 200 period moving average from yesterday, 8 1810. So 10 past six when the, when the market opened again. Here's the 200 period moving average, that orange line. Held it, held it, held it, and then it broke it. And then it became resistance, resistance, and then it went to a peak D right there at, I think it was 820 or something, 830. And then it started to tumble down and it got repelled at the uh, orange line. And uh, so it's still far away. And this is still a fib number that we've got here. It's holding it and it's had a bit of a bounce. Look at the five minute chart. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. 
Okay, look at the five minute chart. Same thing, went to a peak E, where that was a D, this is an E. It pulls back, cross, look, pink, negative, pink, 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 and still negative, and we'll see if it's going to turn green. And if you're looking at the one minute chart, look at this, got a beautiful cup formation right here, uh, right here, cup formation. And it's still green, it's just almost close to turning pink, but it's still green. And there's the 200, repelled at the 200 period moving average. Repel, repel, repel. And then came far away and they came back. Closer you get to it, the greater the chance you're going to hit it. When you hit it, it tells you whether it's going to be the electric wire or not. So as it stands right now, if the, if the, if the, um, if the, the Dow is trying to come back, it's only a minus 18. If after 130, the Dow is able to get to a plus 40 or more, that's actually a good sign, and the reason I liked it because all those down stocks yesterday did well, and we'll see if this follows through today. Meantime, the other sectors are somewhat weak.